So invisible coaching is doing or saying just the right thing at just the right moment. It doesn't need to be any formal session, any agreement. In just an action, you can make a significant change to somebody's life. So I'm Richard, and I'm going to be your teacher. And I'd just like to give you an example of invisible coaching, which is very relevant to this program. Because originally, I was planning this program. Um, the purpose of the program is to provide the video input for a self-study pack. And I was planning it on the basis of something like the fundamentals, mastering the fundamentals of coaching. I was trying to get away from the coaching process, right back to the fundamentals, but I had a mental block and I couldn't make any progress. And particularly when I was trying to write the sales side, which is not my great strength, I just had this block. And I was discussing it with Gabriella and she said, it sounds to me really, it's a bit like invisible coaching. And that was like a switch. And just those two words, not only did I have a better title, but the whole thing flowed and has grown from it. So that's a simple example for me of invisible coaching. Okay, so our objective in these two days is to give you the authentic beliefs and the automatic responses of a natural coach. Because I think if you ask many coaches, how long have you been coaching? The answer they very often will go, give is actually all my life. Because there is such a thing as a natural coach. There are natural bullies and there are natural directors and there are natural people who tell and so on. But there are other people who just naturally are interested in drawing things out of people. So the objective is really just to help you take on those characteristics rather than in a more traditional program where we would be teaching you skills. So if you can think and act like that, it means that just in your daily life, you can make a contribution and change people. So how many of you would like to be able to do that? Good stuff, me too. Right, okay. So how many of you know about the film The Karate Kid? Yeah. yeah. And you, if you've seen The Karate Kid, what happens is this young boy is taken on uh, like by a, a, an elderly mentor in order to prepare for uh, not so much, he went in for a karate e e um, exhibition, but in order to be able to deal with a lot of bullies and so on. And he didn't quite understand what was going on because the deal was, I'll teach you if you do these things for me. And what the mentor did was gave him lots of exercises, which were simple things like this, which taught him the bodily motions of what karate was about. So what we will be doing over the next two days is various exercises and stories and so on, which will enable you to do the same thing uh, in your mind. So I'm not going to explain to you what it's all about until the end. But when we get to the end, then I'll, I'll show how it all fits together. Okay? So, um, it seems to me... Um, let's just for a moment, could you do something for me? Just turn to your, to your neighbour and just say, how do you do? Okay? So that was easy enough, wasn't it? But if you think about it, what a peculiar thing to do. It doesn't really mean anything. It, it's, it's a simplification of how are you, but it doesn't require an answer because only, only foreigners answer the question. The, the, how do you do? The answer is how do you do? So the, the reason it works is because it's ingrained, isn't it? We've learned over the years, naturally, if someone says how do you do, you say how do you do in return. So those are the sorts of things we're going to be learning over the next two days. So although it may be looked down upon maybe in schools and education, we shall actually be doing some rote learning so that we can get some of these words just into your mind. And then rather than having to think about a process, when the moment comes, you'll have it prepared. And I hope afterwards you'll, you'll continue to practice so that you do get these things installed. So we're using accelerated learning techniques, which means that it may be that for some of you, some of the things we do might be a little bit unusual. So uh, they're not just what you'd get in an ordinary teaching or lecturing situation. I think also you'll find that they're, they're, all more, they're more fun. So are you prepared to participate in those? Excellent. Because participation is what it's about. It's about the mind, the body, getting all these e energies together. Now, it's inevitable that if we're doing some form of coaching at some stage, it may be that some of you will be talking about things which are personal or confidential in some way. So can I, will you agree that uh, 
you'll respect that and also that when you leave here, then it becomes confidential and you're not passing it on. So we're in a safe position here. Is that okay? Yes. Good. Right. Oh, that's excellent. So I'd just like to t tell you the first of my stories. Uh, it seems to me many of the stories are based in Tibet, but if you can imagine the sort of mountainous area in, 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 in Tibet and Nepal and so on, where there are these narrow tracks and fields and so on, and everybody you meet seems to be a monk. Uh, so most of my stories are about monks in Tibet, but not all of them. But anyway, there were two monks walking along a, along a track, and they came to a ford. And there had been a lot of rain recently, so the water in the ford was actually quite deep. And as there always is, on their side of the ford, looking rather frustrated, uh, was a young damsel. And the damsel wanted to get to the other side of the ford. So the, the elder of the two monks went up to her and offered and picked her up, and he waded across the river and dumped her down at the other side. Um, and then he and the young monk carried on their walk for a while. But the young monk didn't seem to be very happy and he kept thinking and thinking. And after about 20 minutes or so, he turned to the other monk and he said, Father, I must say, I'm really quite concerned and confused because we're monks and we've taken a vow of chastity and we're not supposed to touch or even think about women. And yet you've just picked up this young girl and physically carried her across the river. And I don't really understand how that's okay. So the older monk then turned to the younger monk and he said, young man, when I got to the other side of the river, I put the young girl down, but you're still carrying her. So it's likely, I don't suppose any of you have got any young damsels in your brain at present, but there may well be various things that you've got on your mind which will be niggling away over the next two days and will interfere with our learning. So our first exercise, you should have a sheet of paper and an envelope. If you just like to write down anything that is on your mind, seal it up and put it in the envelope and then hand it to Pramal. If you want it back at the end of today or the end of tomorrow, you can have it back. But in the meantime, those are worries which you've set aside and that you don't need to be concerned about. So just let us have a quick check. Is, is how many of you here are in a position where you may be wanting to, to coach or deal with, with young children, toddlers and so on? And how many of you deal with teenagers? Now, wouldn't you agree that in both those cases, understanding the subtle ways of communicating would make a big difference? And how many of you work in organisations, and particularly in a management role? And how many of you live in the real world anywhere else? <laughs> okay, well, my objective is that by the end of tomorrow, you will feel as much as possibly unconsciously competent uh, to make the interventions that make differences just in the moment. Thank you. So, would you like to get your workbooks out, please, and turn to page three? And then if, if you turn to a neighbour and interview your neighbour uh, uh, according to the questions that we've set. And when we've completed that, I'll ask you to come back and comment. I'm not interested in the content, that's between you, but I'm interested in the process and how you responded to the different questions that we're asking. So here are the questions that were on page three and that the uh, delegates were being asked to discuss in pairs. And the first one is a fundamental question you've probably come across before. A very good question to ask uh, at the beginning of a workshop. Why are you here? Of course, you can interpret that at several levels. Uh, the next one is, how do you define success for yourself at this stage in your life? It's an interesting question. And what would have to be true for you to discuss your greatest fear? Now you can see this is a very important question when opening up a, a coaching environment. Then what is the biggest change you would like to make in your life? Assuming you had enough support to do it. Very important part. And what would you most like to achieve in this workshop? 
So those are the questions. And then at the end, they were asked to discuss what was the impact of asking each question and what was it like to be asked each question. And in particular, did they notice any difference between the questions? So let's return to the workshop. So who would like to just to make some comments about what the process was like, what it felt like, what the experience was, what you thought was behind the questions, any feedback? I think it's more about going deeper within. It, it takes you from your cerebral to more your sub-levels and then kind of back. Yes. So what was it that took you inside? What, what was it? Um, it's, just, it's just the process of opening up. Yeah. You, know, you, you reach a, a level. I mean, obviously it depends on if you're like that naturally. If yeah. you're a person who reaches out to others yeah. um, so that to get them to open up, which is invariably, I think, I assume, uh, most people in this room naturally gravitate towards others yes. rather than just stand there and wait for the world to come to them. And, and we're more likely to be interested in how people work and such like. So it's not, we're not a typical group, but nonetheless, the way we use words, the sorts of words we choose, can have an impact, as you say. It's, it's not, I'm not just getting information from you. I'm, I'm actually causing something to happen inside you. Okay. So they're fairly personal questions in some cases, but they weren't intrusive. Gently or yeah. Yes, yes. Not yet. Not yet. Intrusive. Yes. <laughs> 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 the, the, the point is, the, you were able to handle them. You didn't feel that you were being uh, assaulted in any yes. way. Yeah. I think the third question, what would have to be true for you to discuss your greatest fear? Is kind of probing they're very good words those what would have to happen for what would have to be what would have to be true for because they're exploratory questions so of those questions there's nothing actually personal there but they would seem to be drawing things out of you I mean, question, what, what is the biggest change you would like to make in your life, assuming you had enough support to do it? I mean, that could, you could take that at any level, couldn't you? Because you could say, well, I'd like to pay off my mortgage. Or you could say, I'd like to transform my relationships or all sorts of things. But so they're not, there's nothing actually in the sentences themselves. It's to do with the context and the relationship is how you interpreted them and how you were willing to interpret them. I sort of felt, for once in my life, sort of speechless. Good. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, in a way, the best question you can ask is ones that the people can't answer. I mean, if you ask them what their name is, they probably know that. But some of these things, it causes people to think, doesn't it? That's the purpose of it. Martin. Uh, probably all of the questions you can answer on a number of levels. Yes, it's your the choice. Words make meanings is we'll, we'll all interpret those words differently. Yes. And answer them differently. Yes. So, the right questions can, can be stuck into a conversation in the right context, and they may be picked up as being a deep question or they may not, but uh, asking about the weather probably won't do that.